Hi everyone, welcome to this quick tutorial video on how to draw a balcony with some railings using advanced steel. For my model, I've already got a advanced steel concrete wall and I'm going to position an opening in this wall and then draw the balcony around it. So I'm going to reset my UCS to world, view it from the right, UCS to the view and then set it to wireframe. And with a polyline, I'm going to draw a very simple opening into my wall. So I'm just going to make this 3 meters by 2400. And there I have a polyline going through my wall and using the features palette and a polygon contour, I can contour using the polyline option that shape out of my wall. So this will allow me to delete this and then go back to a realistic view. So there's my opening and I'm going to put in some reference lines just to set out the extent of the balcony. So I'm going to take it 750 millimeters both sides and just connect that with a simple line. So that is the geometry and set out. I'm going to use the drop down and choose a channel section beam. And I'm going to draw it from the edge of the opening to here. And I'm just going to position my beam like that. Make sure the section is 200 by 75 channel, which is pretty good. And then I'm going to draw the other four sections into place. So just making sure that I do pick the correct point. Again, each one will be orientated slightly different. So I'll just orientate that like that. And again, just switch the orientation. And if you get it wrong, just that one there. And then the final So there's my four channels. I'm going to use the, the miter tool and I'm going to miter channel one, channel two, and I'm going to put in a cut and then create a weld. And the same on each side, so it's that channel to this one, cut. So there's that. I'm just going to create a copy of this beam and copy it across one meter and then two meters and then just quickly change both of these beams and I'm going to change it to, let's say we go with an I section and a 178 and then we can start looking at the connections in here. So I'm going to put in, open my connection vault and look at my summer platform beam connections and I'm going to go with thin plate connection there to here and it's just a matter of configuring the connection so go into the I want to look at the bolts so the let's take them down to a 16 horizontally let's say the edge distance is 50 intermediate distance 45 and you'll see that will change the values there but if we look at the vertical side this is where the so if we say there's a 50 mil distance you and just again decrease these down so we get something like that again I'd probably just go with with one row and we can just increase the set out of the bolts of the edge distance if we change that to 75 you'll see it will start to increase and there we get a very simple connection and then I can just simply connect that everywhere around. I can, I can do a multiple joint copy so select the joint, both the beams and then that will do a multiple connection there. <clears throat> so let's start looking at the railing side of things. So we're going to go to the railing tool and I'm going to place three individual railings. So I'm going to put one on the side section here. So that's the beam. Right click. The start point is going to be there. And the end point is again the corner of the beam. Do I want to select a relative point? I'm going to click no. Let's just try that again. So beam one to here.
So before we place the railing, let's set the UCS to zero. Let's put the railing on the side channel section. And we go from point one to point two. And that will put on the railing. If we look at the library option, So this is the railing that it's put on out of the box, let's say. So we want to configure this and look at how we can place the railing. So if we look at this option, we start going to the advanced joint properties and we start looking at what the railing is doing. So the first thing we want to look at the posts. So these are the, the main structures. So I'm going to change the posts on this to, let's say, some flat beams. So I select my drop down, go to my flat section, and I'm going to put in, let's say, So a 60 by 5 and that places these vertical members there. We can then look at the set out of the post. So this changes each individual post. And as you click through the options, you can see that it will do various different things. But if we look at the handrail, and we look at the handrail at the top, let's get the main thing then. Again, I'm going to go with a flat rail and we'll change this in size, let's say, to 75 by 10. And then I rotate that 90 degrees. So that's starting to put in the main member and then the top handrail. Under the balusters option, I'm going to click that off. And I don't want to create any balusters. So I'm now starting to get my main frame into position. There is a plate at the bottom that is a kick plate. So I'm going to tick that off. Or that is actually a, a bottom middle handrail. You can see that there's an RSA. And again, if we go, well, okay, on that, let's create a flat. And again, we put that in as a, I think it was a 60 by 10, which is this. And we rotate that again, 90 degrees. If we start looking at the end of the handrail you'll see that there is a loop option and that is looping the handrail so I'm going to set that to none so there's the loop there and there what we now need to start controlling is the end of the handrail on both sides you can see there's none and we look at this option in here where we've got an extra length so if we set that to 100 you see it will extend the bottom but if I set that to minus 100 you'll see that it will minus the value now the reason i'm putting it in as minus 100 is that the set out of the posts currently we have a distance from the start and the end so if i set that distance let's say to 50 you see the way it changes the distance here and if i set that to 50 but i'm going to set it 100 on the right 50 on the top and if we look at the handrail at the top we have an offset so we've got something like that in position. But what I really want is I want the, the handrail positioned outside of the channel section. So I go to the posts and I actually position the alignment to the left or I can change it to the right. And you see once I position it on the right that's what I want to do and then we can actually start to extend the post Down. So if I said that was 100, you see the way it moves it in, or if I set it back to zero. So what we want to do is control the, the connection at the bottom. So if we look at the post, we can scroll down, we can go to post fixing, you'll see we've got a connection type. And I'm going to set it to a plate with a weld. And as soon as I set it to a plate with a weld, it extends the posts down. So the distance from the top, if we set it, let's say, to 75, you see the way it's coming down 75 mil on the channel. And the plate, if we set that to 75, you'll see it starts to change the length of the plate. But if the plate was 50, width of the plate was also 50, or we then so we change that to plate with a weld. So that does that. So that's going to get welded 
to the channel. To finish it off, what we need to do is put in the intermediate rails. So when we look at the handrail and the middle handrails, so these are the guys in here, what we want to do is start to control these distances. So that's the bottom one. Then we have the middles. So on the middle handrail, if we sort of start increasing this in size, you will see it will start to create. So if we say the six middle handrails, distance from the bottom, 200. Distance between the middle handrails, 100. You will see that we'll now start to push these up. So on this middle handrail, if I go to change it to a round bar, and we increase that, let's say, to... 20 mil bar and if we put the spacings between to 150 we can get a handrail that starts to look like that so that's pretty much what I'm looking for if we wanted a kick plate we can kick it on and that will put a little kick plate there but if we use it on the left side you can see it will do something like that in this instance I'm not going to use a kick plate so I'm just going to be happy enough with that I'm going to copy this connection so I'm going to click joint copy select my railing select my new beam and I'm going to draw it from left to right with no relative point and you'll see that will copy that configuration across what you will need to be aware of is that when you copy it from that you may need to just change the distances for the offsets at the top and bottom of the post so you can see that the set out of the post is reversed so I'm going to set that to 50 and 100 so then I get that and then joint copy again and I select my railing select my new member And that will position my beam so I'm just going to just double check the position of each of the posts the start and the end post for the set out I'm going to say is 100 on both sides and that will just set these out the same now if you wish you could miter these connections but you would need to remove the joint boxes to do that one final thing I'm going to do to finish this off is I'm going to <coughs> draw in a timber beam. I'm going to draw it from the top to the bottom. So I've got a little user section created. So if I draw that, you see that's currently putting in a, a solid wood section. But if I <coughs> scroll down and I find my way through it and go to other profiles. I've then got one called decking and this is where I've created a little profile beam like that and I'm just going to position that there. I think I've just been a little bit off in my pick point so there's the decking and I'm just going to do a standard copy and I'm going to copy at 150. Now if you wish you can go in and add in a bolt where we could go in underneath and we could bolt in these beams. You could connect with a timber connector down into the steel but for this I, th I think I'm pretty happy with that. So there we have, if I just turn off the joint box we can see this a little bit clearer. There we have a very quick balcony just showing some of the flexibility within the railing macro and you can pretty much create with this railing macro any type